So today, hey, dude, hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? Hey, hey, oh. Peter. Uh, I'm just looking at your stuff. Oh my man. gosh, really well, this is this is a uh, Houston. What are you doing here? I'm just trying to get some cameras, man. That's oh, what, okay. That's I think I, I got some inside. <laughs> Do you have some? And that was the start of dinner. Joel is a production vlogger from Arkansas. He made his way down to Houston. I was in Houston at the same time, so we connected. We chatted about the industry, YouTube, vlogging. Man, it is really nice to actually be able to meet in person and just have that human connection with someone. He had some great insight, some great stories, things to talk about. I was able to share a lot of things with him. So I look forward to meeting him again. I should be up in Arkansas soon, so we're going to catch up later and uh, have some more chats. And the next morning, I got this surprise. I got smacked in the windshield by a big bird. It was not fun. I'm Peter Mokri, a Dallas-based DP photographer, gaffer with a one-ton grip van. I'm always available for hire, so just reach out. So was getting my windshield replaced, and I was so lucky to get it done in just a couple of days after getting back into town. They installed it within an hour, but to my surprise they caused some damage. They actually cut up my alarm system antenna that was connected close to the windshield. So I had to go get that replaced. Thankfully, the company backed up their work. They got it taken care of. It didn't cost me anything extra. So just know, charge for your mileage, charge for travel. It's going to save you in the end. So last episode, I asked, hey, do you want to see stuff about some stands? I showed a little clip and got great feedback from everyone. People were very responsive. I read the comments. Comment, comment, comment. Give me feedback. Give me advice. Good, bad, ugly. I'll take it all. I'm listening to you guys. On this episode, I'm going to go into detail on the stands that I carry on the van and on to set. These will be longer episodes. In the future, I'll be going into more detail on other components that are inside the grip van, including rags, flags, cutters, and different grip equipment. Let's talk stands. This is just a mix of some of the stands that I keep on the van or have an option to have on the van. To my left, your right, are stands without wheels. Here are stands with wheels, casters, whatever you wanna call them. These are Matthew stands. The uh, casters stay on, they're not removable. A lot of these other stands, there are options to add casters to them, whether it's a hard caster for uh, flat surfaces or a rubber pneumatic one if you're going over rough terrain or grass, whatever the case may be. So those are the kind of differences between these two. And a lot of these that don't have it's a loud car, sorry. Um, these don't have the ability to uh, adjust one of the legs to level it out. So right now we're on a little bit of a slope. So these guys would just roll and they wouldn't be straight on a vertical. So that can become an issue. So these are really designed for areas where it's really flat. So I'll start off with these guys, kind of go through it real quick. This is a low boy combo and it is a combo because it takes junior and it has a baby pin on it here. And I'll go into detail showing that stuff closer with the camera. So this is a low boy. It doesn't get too tall. I'm not gonna extend all these guys out, but I could do it on this guy. Start with the top one, go with the next one. I'm five foot 11. So this is yay high right here. All specs are online. You can find it on B and H really good place or the Matthews website. It's got that guy. This is a double riser, uh, baby double riser, rolling double riser. So this guy has two extensions. That's why it's a double riser, has two knobs, goes up this high and you kind of get the idea of it. And this is a triple riser, another motorcycle. Um, this one has three risers, goes a little taller. And then this is a medium riser uh, combo. I'll get all the details of every one of these stands down below in the description so you know everything about them, uh, so you can hunt them down. Uh, this is a big boy. I, it comes with a big grip head right here, and it is a junior 
receiver right here. So the difference between junior and baby, baby is what you're kind of used to on C-stand. Junior is what has that hole that things can get inserted into um, some lights just quicker. You just slide it on, tighten the knob here versus trying to get them on and then adjusting the knob on the light, not as sturdy. Bigger lights require junior uh, stands in general. Then we move on to stuff that has uh, fixed legs that don't roll around. This is a slider stand from Matthews. It's designed for like a Dana dolly, things like that. What's really cool about it is it has two adjustments. So you could do a, a pretty dramatic tilt if you had to, if you're on a, a step or a ledge and you needed to have full adjustment, it gives you a lot of flexibility. So that's really nice about it is two legs that can be adjusted. This is a older style C-stand, but it removes itself here and you could actually put a light straight in here because this is the same size as a junior receiver, but it doesn't have the ability to uh, get adjusted. So if it's on an unlevel surface, you can't do anything. This is the style of C-stand that I have uh, most of, and this has a Rocky Mountain leg. What gives you the option and what's really cool is um, you could actually adjust it according to something you may have so if we had a table here and we wanted to put it up against the table we could actually knock this guy loose and put him up against the table i could even put it up against this stand right here lock it off and it stays you know you weigh it down with uh dirt and do everything you need to be safe but when you're in a situation where it's not level ground you have that ability to adjust and make that slight adjustment to uh to get it right and get it level so here i would slightly adjust it and now it's it's level so it's not going to lean a certain way because of the slope of this ground so that's a really cool function on these guys and then you get into your your big combos and they all have uh rocky mountain legs as well adjustable legs so here i can adjust this accordingly to help level it so you're always going to put that leg on the lowest centered off point so if you have a slope coming this way you wouldn't put it this direction you'd put it straight on between the two points to get that adjustment so when you level it it's level all the right all the way around uh, some people can bring a level like i have here make that adjustment some you can eyeball it i'm pretty good at eyeballing it this is a baby uh triple riser um, it's called a digital trip, uh, baby triple riser. So it has a baby pin here and it's really strong and sturdy. has three risers. It's amazing. This is a low boy without wheels. So you have the low boy here without wheels. You have the low boy here with wheels. These are a lot of times used for uh, Dana dollies. So you could have a Dana doll in here and you could just roll it around. But then you could also go with this guy for a Dana dolly or you could go with this guy. What's really interesting about these stands too is a lot of these guys have a an adjustment if this is too tall you could adjust the knobs here and here and drop this down to get it even lower so they have that flexibility um, and which makes it easy those are not adjustable on the rolling ones they're fixed at the bottom and that's just how they are and then this is a uh junior style uh combo with their digital baby stand digital uh stands matthews digital so it's a little shorter because it's only a double riser but this is a lot easier to manage than this guy just size wise weight wise it makes it easy for uh doing things uh like if you have a 1200d or a 600D, um, they're really great because they're a lot smaller. If you're not booming out or doing anything crazy, they're awesome for that. So speaking of booming out, I have two styles of booms that I like to use for lighting. And this one right here is an Avenger boom. It's like 15 pounds fully extended that it can handle. So I'm gonna put it over here on a stand that I would normally put it on. So it's this guy right here. And it's really nice. and has a good extension to it. So you extend out 
the arm here and then you adjust this accordingly be sure to bag it um, you always want it the arm out on the uh, part of the leg that's uh, or on a leg so here all the legs are big legs unlike a uh, c-stand where you have one big one so you make sure you go over a leg so when it when you oh see it wasn't tightened all the way but when you go and you lean it's stronger versus here it's ready to fall over quicker so we have this boom so let me make this adjustment make it safe so this is really good for like 300 d's um, smaller lights with a smaller dome 15 pounds total weight extended you're going to get flex here over time if you're overloading it it's going to be hard to uh, slide it in, in and out so you got to be aware of that i also like to when i'm putting a load on it do a ratchet strap from this corner down to the bottom makes it a lot safer you have that you have the weight on the other end and then you have the weight here so even if you take the ratchet strap off it should float but you put it there as a safety you rather it go up a little than come crashing down my other boom which will be we'll put it right over here is a junior style and it can handle a lot more weight it's this beast right here Ugh. should be wearing gloves wear gloves guys wear gloves guys don't be like me got only one good hand and i'm not wearing gloves so this extends out a lot further And then you have your adjustment here to put it wherever you need to. So you can see it's got a little more length if we line these guys up. Pretty close. And I'll raise this guy up. Anytime you're booming on something like this, ideally you don't want to use the top riser on a on a on a baby pin stand because they're so tiny if you ended up doing that it just it just flexes so much it's not good i've used c stands to boom with this guy for like a, a pavo tube something really lightweight and you're still going to get a little bit of flex so there's a differences between these two this guy can hold i think 20 to 25 pounds this holds 15 so you could put a bigger payload on this guy and it works out really well so i actually have two of these on board two of these on board so if i'm doing a two-person interview and i need to boom out lights i have that ability <clears throat> also i could use all four of them uh, i could have the main lights here hanging out and these could be hair lights whatever the case may be uh, each scenario is different some people like to use menace arms the disadvantage to a menace arm is it has a support here and you run a ratchet strap from there to here to keep this from flexing this can pretty much go to the ceiling there's nothing stopping it so if you have low ceilings uh, this has an advantage of going a lot higher you actually gain about a foot which can make all the difference in an interview most uh, commercial spaces have 10 foot ceilings homes are eight foot ceilings uh, on average uh, older homes and with a 10 9 to 10 foot ceiling in an office space if you're eating a foot off of it then you're eating another couple feet with the light you're down three feet and you're already at a six foot standing position if hopefully they're sitting you're just eating up a lot of your your headroom and this this can help with that you could get this put on a aperture f22c mat light and you've got a top down light that's out of the shot nice and clear for like a dinner scene or something to that effect so it makes it really great so now i'm gonna collapse all this stuff or actually i'm gonna come in with the camera and show details of all the lights or uh, all the stands so you can see what what they're kind of built like so here's the matthews jr rolling stand see that baby pin pops out right there <clears throat> and then you have the casters that are locking so you just step on them and then you kick them to knock them loose so that's how that guy is built we have the double riser here come on let's get focused there we go double riser that's rolling right there 
and then this is the triple riser version. A lot of times I'll use these for monitors. They've got a good wide spread on them, so good for director's monitors. And then this is the medium high roller. And you could see it already has a grip head on it built in. And then it takes the junior. This has three riser points and it has a really big spread. If you compare it to the other guys, it's quite large of a spread. We move over here, we have our slider stand and it has just one riser point. There we go. And then you have the two adjustments there. That knob right there, that knob right there. This is the short C stand. Can't say what we used to call them. It's not PC, so it's just a short C stand. And then we have the one with the Rocky Mountain leg, which is my standard. This is the junior digital stand or junior combo. Digital combo. I'll have to look up the names. There's so many different weird names for them. So, oh, combo digital stand. Two riser. There's the name. And then it has the boom, which has a junior receiver and it even has a baby pin that pops out. Then we will move on to the baby digital three riser and that's how it looks. And then we have a junior low boy combo stand here and then a Matthews combo right there. So now we got to put these stands up. I'm going to show you how they collapse, uh, how they stand. It's a little bit of uneven terrain here. So I know I'll have issues with this guy, but all the others should be good. So I'm going to start from the back here and work my way forward. So that's that. You just pull it up. It's ready to go. Same here. Knock this loose. This one's done. I don't know if I mentioned this, but when you lock these wheels on these uh, casters, it also prevents them from twisting. So right now this guy moves freely. If I lock it, it prevents it from twisting too. Um, so that pr prevents a lot of movement. So it's a two action. So when it's locked into place, when I collapse it, it could prevent it from closing up. Always watch your fingers around stands. You could pinch yourself real easily. C stands. When you collapse them, they don't stand around anymore. Something that's really important when you set something like this up, this is right in line with my eyeball. Slip a tennis ball on it. Tennis balls, you buy them, cut a slot through them. You can cut an X through them, pop them on. It's good safety to have. Most people on set aren't paying attention or they're in a hurry. So play it safe. Let's go for this big guy. So, these are done a little bit different because they just are. So, this collapses like this. This is kind of the industry standard. And then I'll give it a little bit of spread so it doesn't fall over here. And there we go. I like to uh, to uh, have a little bit more uh, space when I'm working on set. So 
I like to keep things tidy but accessible. Some people on set want to have everything set up so they grab it. If it's set up and you have barely any room to go, that's fine. But if I have to take something clear across set through a bunch of tight spaces, people, this, that, it, it can get real dangerous with these stands. When you're moving stands, call points around corners. You come around a blind corner, boom, you could take someone's eye out, you can knock someone over, someone could have something really delicate. Main thing is safety of people. Second thing is, I would say job security. You, uh, you damage something that's irreplaceable, they're not giving you a call back. So that's how I look at it. This guy's coming down, I'm gonna collapse this up. The magnet on here. All right, that's staying there for now. It's probably going to fall over. Be careful on uneven surfaces. And then this guy's coming in. I like to keep my stands booms and you know other things a certain way so every time when i go to get it or i pack it up things match and they slide into each other really well so with this guy it has to be done different the uh, other combo style so we can put it away better And I also tighten all my knobs for the junior uh, portions, the combo portions. And the reason I do that is some of these knobs on these stands like these are designed to not come out. So you loosen them all the way, they kind of stop or they should on a lot of them. If you don't tighten these down when you transport them, you're gonna lose the knobs and then the, the stand becomes useless. You can't really use it. I keep spares on board. But even then, you have them all loose. You could, you could lose them all on a long trip. So it's something to really consider. So that guy's gonna stand there. All right. This guy could sit in one of these if I wanted it to, but I'm just gonna lay it down on the ground and then we'll let you take a look. So here's everything collapsed down. You can see the varying heights and lengths. So that's something to consider as well is how much space do you have? Can you really get one of these giant combos into your space and do you really need it? It's the end of the day, prep is done. I have a shoot tomorrow that involves camera, audio, lighting, some grip. Sunday and Tuesday, I'm coming in as a gaffer with my grip van and some lighting. So that will be a totally different setup for the van. I've got it prepped as much as I can without overloading it for the shoot tomorrow that will involve camera. With that in mind, I've spent the whole day here at my office getting gear prepped, getting the van prepped, cleaning stuff up, organizing, it gets cluttered. You do a lot of shoots and they're back to back to back. You, it's hard to stay tidy and organized because you're barely getting enough time to eat or sleep. And then you get caught up in other things. And even though you have days off, you're like, you know what, I'd rather just chill, watch something on t TV, relax, watch some YouTube videos, catch up on other vlogs. And it becomes difficult to get back to straightening things up then you're getting thrown right back into some shoots and you're like oh and it, you're scattering around to get things done so yeah i spent a whole day here in the heat it was a uh, over 105 degrees but it had to get done and that's where your rate is important it's not the time you're on location only it's the prep before the shoot it's the communicating with client it's actually getting certain things together, maybe picking up extra equipment. 
doing the shoot takes time. And then when you come back, you're either going to edit, you're going to deliver uh, footage. You have to organize things and check on things because maybe everything wasn't put away correctly, or you may have to unload stuff and swap it out. All that takes time. So your time isn't only when you're there, your time that you're paid for should be when you're getting things ready. So your rate should reflect that. So don't be like, oh, well, I'm getting, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks an hour. That's amazing, you know, and I'm gonna go work two hours on this shoot, but it takes you an hour to prep. It takes you an hour to drive there. It takes you an hour to drive back. You're gonna do some edits. Is it really worth it? You've gotta add up all your time because your time is valuable. I recently had someone that reached out and wanted me to come out two hours for one day, two hours the next day. Well, can I do anything before and after that that involves a client? There's really, a time when a client's like, oh, I only need you from 10 to 11 o'clock. And it's not gonna land on the same day someone wants me from 12 to two o'clock. So you've gotta account for that and you've gotta be strict about your half days, your full days, whatever you do, or full days only. So I wanted to let y'all guys kind of get some insight on my prep. Um, you got to see some of my flags, cutters, things like that. I showed off my big cart right here and it's already a long enough episode, so I'm gonna cut it short from there. Uh, stay tuned, there's gonna be more involving the prep of the van, what I have on it, why I do certain things a certain way. And also, I may do, I, I have so many carts, it's unbelievable. I just picked up that new Magliner cart. Uh, I have rock and rollers, two different sizes. I have my custom carts, I have a Rubbermaid cart, I have just regular Magliners and dollies. I may kind of give you guys a rundown, if y'all are interested, and show you the versatility of those uh, carts, what you could load on it, and why I prefer to use certain ones over others when I go to shoots because carts will save you so much time and save your back from carrying things in and piling stuff up and hoping to rely on something being on site. It just slows you down. So having carts is great and you could get them as cheap as $50 a pop. I've gotten carts for $50 a pop that are normally 500 because people will just get rid of them not knowing what they have or they just don't care. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone that's uh, tuning in, commenting down below, subscribing. You know, it really motivates me to keep going and keep capturing this stuff. I probably could have shortened my day by not vlogging it, but you know what? I do it for you guys. I do it for myself as well. Um, it's not only for you, uh, but also I do it for uh, my clients to kind of give them an insight on what gets done before and after shoot, what happens at certain style shoots. Cause now I can go to my client and they're like, well, what does this shoot really involve? Like what, what goes on? Oh, here you go. You can look at this vlog and see everything that we do. You can see the time lapse of the setup of the teardown, how much equipment is involved and why we need that time, why we need the extra crew members. And it just makes it a lot easier. So I'm able to implement my vlogs into my business workflow by educating clients, but also educating prospective uh, shooters to come join me on shoots. So it's it really comes full circle. Y'all are teaching me, I hope I'm teaching you, and we're creating a community here. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna keep cranking these videos out every Sunday. Y'all have a good one.